Holy shit. Let's bring up Steve. Bring up Steve. Have a little fade out. Uh huh. I, I just did. Rips here with a review for the second week. Bring on Steve. Okay. He actually began yep. the show with a review. Whoa, whoa, okay, whoa, whoa, well, there's. Whoa, totally hang on, there's two Steves. Steve's. Wait. There's way too much going on here. Look at this shit. Okay, so I'm here. Wait. I got no, it. he's. What well, now? He's there. You know what? I'm not angry. I'm just. I'm just disappointed, I guess. You see Beagle, and he's putting out such great content, but then you look at what's around him. You look at a YouTuber putting out a video every day with thousands of views, someone like someone like x ones for example, and you just think, you know, what could he be? I had papers watching Beagle's stream last week. I had the New York Times. They ran Mastermind's Blaster Bind. The Washington Post was there. Commander fails to impress. I had the National Enquirer on the scene pursuing a story that Beagle might fuck sectoids. And they just found out that he liked to fuck his own soldiers. I don't know. Gamage, no! Ah, first death. Beagle began the day by picking up squad size one and loading out for a crashed raider, which he had splashed the week before. He headed into a dark medium forest map and actually began the mission with a misjudged move, pulling a pod which he could see on a motion tracker. Roger that. I've got a visual. Okay, they were a lot closer than I thought, and it's four sectoids. The sectoids and Beagle both fell back, with Beagle setting up some overwatches, which traded with ineffectual sectoid fire on the alien turn. Beagle had the chance to set up a flank and attempted it with Dogboy, but he missed his shot and he laid down suppression and overwatch to try to hit the sectoids as they moved. Unfortunately, it was ineffectual, and it was the sectoids turn to set up a flank, with a mine merge sectoid failing to hit the mark. Ooh! Taking a cheeky little flank instead, actually. That I exposed myself to. That could have been a tactical tumble. Beagle suppressed the sectoid overwatch to allow Justicar to pick up a safe flanking kill, and Claymore picked up another with an AP grenade. When Scoopa Steve finished off a third sectoid, with the overwatch from suppression, the fourth scampered off into fog of war as Beagle's soldiers pursued ineffectually toward a mal canister. Probably bait? Yeah, it's it's huge bait. Unable to do much against the pot of four floaters, Beagle laid down smoke and picked up a fairly lucky kill with Claymore. Suppression from Scuba Steve made the floaters irrelevant during their turn, and a pot of four thin men patrolled in just barely out of line of sight. You don't actually have to pull this pot here. If you do, they can shoot at you. But Beagle quickly pulled the trigger on a rocket from Memster. The rocket wasn't bad at all. It managed to kill one thin man and deal good damage to the other three. And Black Dragon managed to pick up another. But there were still two thin men who needed to be dealt with. Jessica pulled a floater overwatch to let Dogboy move up and attempt to kill them both with an AP grenade, which failed spectacularly. <laughs> ah! Claymore was able to move forward and pick off one of the Thin Men from heavy cover, but what followed was a cascade of perhaps excusable errors, which nevertheless climaxed into a fatal folly. Beagle moved Gamage forward into light cover outside of smoke and failed to kill the last remaining Thin Man, and then he chose to suppress the Thin Man instead of a floater with Scuba Steve. The Thin Man's just gonna run away anyway, but the floaters are on full health and ready to exact their revenge. And completely uncontrolled, they did so, zeroing out Gamage in her little light cover position. Oh boy. Ooh, Gamage first death. Oh shit, here he comes. He was shooting at Gamage again. Gamage, no! Ah, first death. Fortunately for Beagle, none of his soldiers panicked, and Justicar was able to kill a second floater the next turn, with Black Dragon and Memester picking up the third. The last one retreated off into Fog of War, and from there the mission was a basic, straightforward affair. Beagle slowly picking off the sectoid and floater who were milling around the map, and then killing the two outsiders. Dogboy actually failed to promote the specialist here, despite taking a 65% flanking shot at a sectoid and throwing an AP grenade at two three hit point thin men. It's a minor mismanagement, but it's hard to really blame Beagle for that one. He recovered some good meld and UFO bits and headed back to the base. 
We need more interceptors. We need much more. Beagle made some sails for a couple more interceptors to shore up the skies. And then it was time for the first terror mission of the campaign. It's gonna be okay, it'll pan out. Oh, oh god, okay. It's not panning out. Beagle loaded out a strong team, notably including two close combat assaults to deal with the chrysalids and zombies on the mission. He gave Boganova, Legiopatria, Nostra to increase their will on his soldiers, and headed out to Calgary, loading into the L-shaped road map up at the top, probably the best spawn point on the map, although it does make for some awkward lines of sight and very open ground to cover in combat. I would not call this my favorite spawn for a CCS squad. The mission quickly got awkward in more ways than one. What? Why are you bumping your ass up onto her? Beagle moved forward and voluntarily pulled a chrysalid pod, which may have been overly aggressive. While Ohio Yankee and Duke were able to clean up kills on the two chrysalids who moved toward him, the other two moved off into fog of war, starting to kill civilians. Might have been better to let the pod run into him so that the chrysalids were closer to his soldiers to begin with. Can we get a heart attack in here? Oh, let's get some floaters. Okay, good, 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 good! The next turn took Beagle about 30 minutes to play. He started things off with the battle scanner to get some vision and laid down fire with Black Dragon and Bogan Nova. He managed to find a way into close quarters range with Cappy and Sour Goat and killed one floater with a nice flush combo. Sour Goat picked up another kill with Cappy following suit and then it was the alien turn with zombies moving forward into close combat specialists and taking some good damage and the floaters having tasted mammal blood the mission before treating the civilians with all the care that a 15 year old might show a piñata at his birthday party. Oh, and uh, by the way, another pot of them seems to have pulled. Duke got in the action with a good grenade, although Black Dragon was unable to land his shot. And then Beagle spent a long time agonizing over how exactly close combat specialist works. Fuck! Uh, how does it work? Shit. Beagle laid down a little bit more suppressing fire and ended the turn, relying on the assault close combat specialist rings to keep them safe. Unfortunately, rings of great power are mischievous things, and they were all of them deceived, with a zombie walking straight through the close combat specialist circles and dealing six damage to Sour Goat. After the last zombie was finally dealt with by Sour Goat, dropping to one hit point in the process from her acid burn, the rest of the mission became a very slow and deliberate trench warfare sort of fight. Floaters finished killing civilians, but facing suppression every turn, their AI was not able to really mount an attack against Beagle soldiers. And the soldiers slowly whittled them down, missing quite a few shots, but landing enough to bring the mission home. That mission felt worse than the last one. And no one even died on this one. But we're alive. And so are three civilians. The big wound to Sour Goat and three fatigue wounds really added up here, and the small mission rewards were not enough to compensate for barracks which is wallowing in fatigue and wounds. The panic in Canada is a pretty big deal too. Launching a satellite over the country helps deal with it a little bit, but another terror mission could push it all the way into the red. After a couple of sails to get excavations going, in particular toward the steam generator, Beagle was greeted by the April research mission. There was some discussion in chat about the chances of this being trapped, so let's head back to Strategic Scrying 101 for an explanation of alien threat level and the trapped UFO mechanics. Threat is a resource which tracks how well XCOM is doing in the campaign. It increases for each UFO XCOM destroys or raids, going up by one point for scouts, fighters, raiders, and destroyers, or two points for larger UFOs. At the end of each month, the aliens divide threat by two and plan missions based on what number is left, and then subtract another two from it, and that amount of threat carries over into the start of the next XCOM month. In Beagle's campaign so far, he picked up three threat in March, meaning the aliens planned April as though he had one threat, reset to zero, and he's picked up two threat again since then. Any landed UFO has a threat divided by 30% chance of being trapped, which adds extra enemies to the mission. That means that this mission had about a 6.7% chance of being trapped. Beagle let his scopes complete building and loaded out for the mission. This looks reasonable to me. Plenty of rifles, shotgunning fun, looks plenty good to me. What the hell does a battle rifle do again? After all that, it turned out this UFO was not trapped and ended up actually being a very easy mission. Beagle cleaned up a floater pod with no resistance, 
got a little stuck in with a pot of three thin men and a sectoid, ironically taking incoming fire from the sectoid out of all the aliens in that pod, but managed to clear it out with not too much difficulty and picked up a melt canister on the way to dealing with the seeker pod. After killing the outsider, he headed home with one wound and a solid haul for the mission. All right, at least it wasn't all bad today. Lots of Illyrium, lots of alien alloys. As always, you can find Beagle streaming XCOM at twitch.tv slash beagsandjam Thursday night, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and he streams other games there throughout the week as well. I've been John Ribs. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you'd like to support improving the quality and quantity of videos like these, just leave me some feedback on something else you'd like to see me review or something I could improve in these. And the link to my Patreon is below the channel as well if you want to support financially. I hope to see you all next week with a review of whatever the hell Beagle does this time. Rip Gamage, rip Calgary, and uh, see you guys later.